What's going on guys? It's Michael from GPRisers.com and today we are going to go over my opinions on our newly built RX 6600 XT rig. Now here in the GP Risers mining bunker we do drink coffee. Uh, this tumbler was actually made by the same company that made the knife that you saw in the previous video. We're going to go ahead and drop their link down below. Uh, they have an Etsy shop. We're not affiliated. We don't make any money off of it. They're just a great company and a pleasure to deal with. So definitely check them out. They do great work on tons of different products. So back to the RX 6600 XT. Every time I say that, I think of an RTX and I want to say RTX, but it's not. It's an RX. Now, this is another Red Devil edition that we have yet to put into the GP risers bunker but it's going to be coming very soon and that's because these cards are affordable so when i say affordable these cards are around 500 usd each and you can kind of find it in the third party markets for around that price so 500 dollars is a lot of money to spend on a graphics card However, in today's world, that means you are buying a low tier graphics card. So the rig here to my left is the rig that we made here in the previous videos here in the mining bunker. So this rig right here costs a total of about $6,600. Now that's 12 cards at $500 a piece and then about $600 for the 1600 watt power supply the 12 card motherboard, and also the processor and RAM. So as for stats, let's jump into it. Here up on the screen, you can see the total rig stats. It has the memory overclocks, the voltage for the cards, the memory voltage, and some of the other stats that you see here. Now, if you're looking closely, you see that each card has about 50 watts to 60 watts draw. The real wattage draw is really around 70 to 72 watts per card. So the next picture here, you can see the total system pull, which as you can see is 383 and a half mega hash mining Ethereum. So if we jump over to what to mine, you can see here that 383 and a half mega hash with a total system wattage pull of about 950 watts, taking into account 10 cents per kilowatt, this rig right to my left makes about $26.37 per day. Now that's about $2.28 a day in electricity, which equates to a little over $68 per month in electricity to run this rig. Now that kind of wattage pull from a rig this size is surprising to me. I'm used to dealing with RTX cards, you know, 3070 Ti is pulling 180 to 200 watts. If you see over here, we have a 3090 rig that's pulling about 300 watts per card. So having a 12 card rig pulling a total system wattage of 950 watts is crazy. So if you look at this from a financial standpoint, each card is about $500. And if you take into account how much this is mining every day and taking out electricity, then this rig actually pays off each card in 19 days. But looking at it as a whole, $6,600 for the rig, making about a little over $26 a day means that this thing will be paid off in 250 days. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that is awesome. At the end of 250 days, this thing will be paid off and the income that it's producing will no longer go against paying the rig off, but that money will be going into your wallet. Or if you're like me, expanding and into other cards. So just some opinions from the GP Risers team on this rig. Um, comparing this rig to something like the 3090s that we have over there, each card is pulling about 70 to 72 watts. Now that means that the actual heat coming off of this rig is relatively low. So really what that means is there's not a whole lot of heat that's sitting on this rig. And the heat that is there is spread out through 12 different heat sinks. So there are no thermal throttling issues with these. I don't believe AMD really has that issue, but it's always good to keep your cards cool. So for me, that's a huge plus on the RX 6600 XT. The second big point with these is the price point. Again, these are about $500 per card. Now that means if I have to RMA one of these, I'm still gonna have 11 other cards running. And I have 32 mega hash for a $500 card that's out being fixed by the manufacturer. On the 3090 rig over there, if one card goes out, that's a $2,500 card, mining at almost 120 mega hat, which is equivalent to four of these. So if one of the 3090s have to be RMA'd, that's a huge loss waiting for that card to get back. And really having 12 of these, especially with one power supply and one motherboard, the square footage that this takes up is relatively the same as a rig with 3090s on it, but with much, much less heat. We here at the GP Risers team also started mining residentially. We started mining about five 
five years ago and we always had issues with outlets and breakers in home. I was never able to build a 3090 rig at home because of the power draw. The eight 3090s that we're currently mining draw over 3000 watts and you are unable to run that on 120 volt. But here we have 950 watts running across 12 cards, meaning this rig right here to my left is a rig that you can run on any standard outlet in your home. But not only can you run that on a standard outlet, you can also run it and not worry about it getting too warm. Once you near about the 80% rule on 120 volt, especially with thinner gauge wire and power cords, you start running into the issue where the outlet will get warm. If you go over the 80% or get too close to the breaker limit, you can even start melting the outlet. Another great point on the RX 6600 XTs is that it really doesn't matter which card you get. You know, with the RTX 3080s, 3090s, you're always you know worried about these thermal throttling issues. And if it's a Zotac card or if it's an Asus Tough, it might, or especially the Gigabyte cards, always have very, very bad thermal throttling. And yeah, you can always replace the you know thermal pads on these cards and taking off the backplate and doing everything like that, but it's a huge pain. Because these cards are only drawing about 70 to 72 watts, the heat sinks don't really matter. Here we have some lower end XFX cards, and at the top we have some Red Devil. Of course the Red Devils are going to be a higher version, a more premium model of the RX 6600 XT. For me personally, it does not matter. I will not pay a premium from one 6600 XT to another. And I think that that's very beneficial when it comes to cards that are low wattage. When I'm out looking for some deals on cards and I find a gigabyte vision, I instantly have to turn it down. And that's because of thermal throttling and all these other issues. And you have to buy specific models for specific cards. And again, the RX 6600 XTs, you don't have that issue. Moving on, my last point that I want to make on the RX 6600 XTs is one that a lot of people touch on. And they say that it's basically a 470, 480, 570 or 580. And for those of you watching that don't know what those cards are, those are the older AMD cards that were released about five or six years ago. Those cards had four gigabyte versions, which many people mined on. However, the DAG for Ethereum has crossed that point. So now people are still mining on the eight gigabyte versions of those cards. Now the wattage on those cards can get near, I wanna say about 90 watts if you're lucky. These are mining at 72 watts. Now, of course you can find a 580 eight gigabyte used on eBay for around 350 to $400, which will mine the same as this at a slightly higher wattage. However, you're buying a card that is five years old. And the one thing that you have to look at is down the line. If crypto takes a turn and the market is flooded with GPUs, are people going to be looking for RX 588 gigabytes or are gamers going to be looking for the RX 6600 XT? Resaleability is a huge thing in the GPU markets and it's something that I always take into account. So that pretty much sums up everything about my opinions on the RX 6600 XT rig. Also, I will be using this rig as an example when discussing the tax benefits of purchasing graphics cards and mining hardware before the end of the year. If you're entering the next year with a gain that's equal to the amount of this rig and you carry that cash into next year, you're gonna be taxed on that $6,600. But if you decide to purchase this rig, all of a sudden your gain is wiped out, which you're out $6,600, but you have a mining rig. And then the actual net cost of that, if you're in a 25% tax bracket, would bring down the total cost of this rig to $4,950, which then brings down the total return that it will take for you to pay off this rig from 250 days to 188 days. And that kind of analysis is extremely important when trying to decide whether to jump into GPU mining or not. But we'll go over that in our business videos. I look forward to filming those and I look forward to going back and forth with the community on questions that you might have. But until then, I hope you guys like this video. Usually it has been just my hand in the video most of the time. I'm trying to get more content with me on the screen. But tell me what you guys think about the RX 6600 XTs. Are you guys mining with these? But that's gonna be everything for this video guys please drop a comment down below with you know your opinions on the rx 6600 xts do you think these cards are a good buy do you agree with me do you disagree with me why and why not but other than that i hope everyone has a great rest of their day and we'll see you guys tomorrow